Welcome to the channel. Thank you everyone for tuning in. On today's video, I'll be comparing two very popular watches and homaging a very iconic watch, a watch which I really love myself. Of course, we're talking about none other than the Seiko 62 Mask. Now, one thing I do like about both watches in particular is keeping to those dimensions of the older version. You guys are well aware, Sal Martin, Heimdaller, many other brands on AliExpress have attempted the 62 Mass homage. However, most of them use 40 to 41 millimeter cases. Now, while a lot of you guys do enjoy them, I prefer the much smaller cases, which are more in line uh, with the dimensions of the older 6.2 mass. Now, you guys recall the Seastern 6.2 mass. Um, I reviewed this plenty. It gave you a really nice detailed review. And this watch uh, absolutely took me by surprise. Um, really well finished and an incredible watch at the value uh, that Seastern have set this at. Now, with regards to Romalti, you guys should recall uh, towards the end of last year, uh, Romalti came out the blue uh, and were on an absolute hostile takeover. They came out with like 20 uh, models in succession, loads of dial variants, bezel options, uh, loads of great watches that they homaged. And I reviewed a fair amount of Romalti watches. Uh, and for the most part, they did really well. They came up with some really well-made watches, great designs, uh, and they've kind of hit most of the Seiko homages out there, as well as a couple of others. Now, with this particular model, the 62 Mass Homage, um, this didn't quite cut it. Uh, it wasn't the same level as the rest of the watches. It did have a couple of issues. Uh, so this comparison is going to be a very tight one. Both watches are very similar. In terms of specifications, they are more or less exactly the same. Both are 316 L stainless steel. Um, both have a AR coated sapphire crystal. The Romalti has a flat sapphire crystal, whereas the Seaston has a slightly top hat sapphire crystal. Both give us 200 meters of water resistance with a screw down crown, screw down case back. Both also use the Seiko Epson NH35 movement, which is a very reliable and robust workhorse. Uh, both also feature a 120 click unidirectional bezel. One comes with a stainless steel insert and the Seaston comes with a ceramic insert. Now let's take a look at dimensions. So let's take a look at the Romalti. The case size is actually 38 millimeters at the case. If you include the bezel and measure it towards the top, it comes at 38.5 millimeters. The case thickness is 13 millimeters. The log to log is 47.5 millimeters, which grows to 53.2 millimeters when you include these male end links. You do have a 20 mil log width, an overall weight of 180 grams on the steel bracelet. And also on the same bracelet, the cost of this watch is around 168 pounds as of today, which is what checked on the AliExpress store. Now, in comparison to the Seastern, this is a case diameter of 37 millimeters and just a touch smaller on the bezel at 38.3. The thickness, it is slightly bigger than the Romalti at 13.5 millimeters due to that top hat crystal. The log to log is a little more compact, 46.3 millimeters. Uh, and at the case, you can also see there's a bit more curvature on the logs. But with the male end links on the bracelet, it does go up to 53 millimeters. The log width is 20 millimeters and the overall weight is 163 grams, which is a considerable amount less than the one on the Romalti. Now this with the steel bracelet and the Looms ceramic insert and the Loom date wheel is £146 as of today. Um, but bear in mind they are very low on stocks. So at this point I might as well stop the review because we know this is you know, giving you a bit more uh, and it is priced way less than the Romalti. Now I don't know if it's just me but I'm sure the Romalti was cheaper when it initially came out or that could have been on the leather or fabric strap that they gave it with um, and I believe the season was a bit pricier so I don't know what's happened with the prices they've gone up and down either way um, however as it stands this is the cheaper option but I'm going to continue with this and you know give you a closer look at both watches because as I said you know looking exactly the same not much between dimensions uh, they still are quite different and I think the main difference you can see in hand already is course that case shape uh, Romalti's case is slightly straighter uh, whereas the one on Seastern if you look at the logs it does curve in a bit more uh, and the Romalti just looks a bit straighter and of course that profile being quite a bit straighter than the Seastern will have an impact when you do with this on wrist now let's start comparing all the individual features starting at the crystal dial hands bezel moving on to the case and bracelet so when we look at the dial I think both watches are evenly matched in terms of build quality and the actual quality of the dial used both have great use of loom. Romalti uses BGW9, Seaston uses C3. Both are very bright and no patchiness and really well made. Now the hour markers on both, again, 
very high quality polished iron markers depending on the type of dial you go for on the remote you can get all sorts of different finishing on the dials uh, seaston gives you this sunburst finish with maybe five or six different colors you've got a really nice fume red uh, blue in hand you've got a gray i believe a black maybe a silver and maybe another one uh, i'm probably missing but you can see that all on their website. Now, Romalti actually tops Seaston with this one. They give you loads more variants. You've got a lot more bezel insert options uh, and you've got also a lot more dial options. Uh, and some of these dials are you know, deeply textured. Uh, you've also got Metroid options, um, just so many. But in terms of actually build quality and what you get from both of the dials, I'd say they're pretty evenly matched and the rest is up to your taste. Only thing which Seaston does give you is a loomed date wheel. So when it comes to the dial, I think I'll give a point to Seaston just on that value add concept uh, because a date wheel which is loomed does cost a bit more. However, on the dials, I'm not too sure if there's anything else. Regarding the handsets used, both use again very high quality hands. Now, Romalti's handset used on this is a bit more closer to the SPB185 handset. Um, however, the second hand is from a 6.2 mass. Um, but these are fully polished. They do have a split down the middle with a chamfer on either side, but again, fully polished, um, giving you good legibility. The light does catch on these hands uh, really well, and it does complement the dial. It does also modernize it. Now, with regards to the Seaston, again, very traditional, and the handset is really well made. You have a bit more micro detailing present. Uh, you've got brushing across the surface of those hands. You've got beveled edges, which are polished, uh, and a fully brushed second hand. Now they've changed it slightly, uh, that rectangle is a bit further down the handset giving you a more pronounced point or slightly longer which does touch the edge of that chapter ring which is nice to look at, great proportions, um, great loom match on the dial in the hands. So there's no difference really between the handset, yes the Seaston has a bit more micro detailing um, but both are I think equally priced. From what I've seen. So next up, let's compare the bezels on both. Uh, in terms of looks, uh, I think the bezel inset on the Romalti does look slightly wider. You've also got uh, a brushed steel inset, if I'm not mistaken. Large white markers, uh, all printed well. The pips are really nice uh, because it does you know, sit into that bezel insert quite well. Um, in terms of the machining, it's a coin edge style. Uh, just a touch rougher than the Seastern, um, but nothing significant that you can actually feel um, and it feels good in the hand. There's no wobble, uh, there's no movement, there's no bounce in that bezel. Now in comparison to the build quality of the Seastern, as I said, a very similar however Seastern's coin edge is polished, feels a, just a touch better in the hand, it's a bit more defined. Um, again, you know, solid bezel, no back play, uh, no no movement in the bezel and seems pretty solid now let's check out the rotation on both let's start off with the c-stern we've got a very solid rotation defined positive clicks and of course it lines up dead center uh, and that's a nice bezel very refined as well uh, as you can feel in the way it grinds um, really nice sound as well no issues there now, when we compare the Romalti, uh, and this is one of my big negatives when I did the review of this. I think the spring used in this is much weaker. Uh, the bezel does feel slightly hollower than the one on the Seastern. Um, yeah, and you don't have back play as such, but you've got play due to the spring. So when I rotate that slightly, you can see the bezel does spring back. Uh, but surprisingly, it does not affect the alignment. It still lines up bang on at the 12. Um, but yeah, it's just the sound isn't that nice. The rotation is nowhere near the level of the Seastern. And moving on to the case, both watches are pretty evenly matched. Um, and surprisingly, it's something which you wouldn't expect, uh, which does kind of tip the scale slightly. So if you look at the finishing on the Romalti, you'll find very soft circular brushing on the A-face, followed by, again, smooth brushing along the side of the watch drill logs on the case and you've got these polished highlights along the whole side of the case which i absolutely love it does really bring the case to life a bit gives it a bit more of a dimension and more quality feel as well the crown is signed you've got some circular brushing on the center you've got the r logo for multi uh, nice machining as well big grip i think 7.3 millimeters on the size of the crown and i think for this case shape uh, it is perfect because it gives you just great grip in terms of screw in screw out function of the crown is fine there's no issues with that at all it does catch the threads fine uh, and you find it does screw in uh, okay now on the case back 
uh, you'll find a very plain case back. There's nothing on there. It is quite thick, but fully brushed on the back. No signage whatsoever. Um, but the finishing, what I can say, is very smooth, very fine. There's no sharp edges, even though uh, it is you know, quite an edgy case. There's a few straight lines there. However, no sharpness in there at all. And it does feel really premium in hand. And going back to the case shape, which I pointed out earlier, just a bit straighter than what you'll find on the C-Stern. Now, the finishing is very similar on the C-Stern. You've got very soft circular brushing on the A-face, uh, very fine grain indeed. Move it along to the side and you've got fine brushing along the profile of the side. You've also got drill logs on this and you also find those polished highlights going along the side of the case. Uh, so that's present on both watches and it's credible to see both of them went, went that direction. Um, only thing in terms of case shape, you can see it does slightly slope down, uh, curves a bit more than the one on the Romolity, which means it should be more comfortable on wrist. The crown is a bit smaller, it is a whole one millimeter smaller, coming in at 6.3 mil. But you know, just to look at the difference one millimeter does make a huge difference between crowns of both watches. But it is still pretty decent to operate. Um, what you do find your finger does catch on the side of the bezel in terms of rotation and function of the crown uh, spot on positive click uh, and one thing that c stern will stand out is uh, that is just that crown function uh, when you do screw back down is buttery smooth uh, and which is what i find with pretty much all of the watches so away from the crown let's have a look at the case back so let's open this clasp and the case back is a lot more detailed heavily engraved in comparison to the Romalti. Now, this may be subjective because not everyone might like this. However, from a value-add point of view, you can see Seastern has just gone all out with like a mural on the case back or like a little engraving there. Uh, it does paint a bit of a scene. It's that Seastern starfish about to jump into the ocean. So you've also got a little nod to, you know, Seiko's uh, Great Wave emblem that they have on a lot of their watches. And of course, it's fully brushed out of that. So in, in regards to the case, I think literally 1.2 season just due to the case back uh, because that would be a bit more expensive to produce versus a plain case back on the Romalti. I think this is where uh, you'll see a bigger difference. Now both have male end links. Now oddly enough the season looks like that center link is longer when you compare it directly with the Romalti. However you'll find that season's end link fits more towards more inwards in the case it does go further into the case whereas Romaltis doesn't this is why you get a overall log to log of 53 millimeters for both uh, so that is quite um, interesting to look at i'd expect the Romalti to be just a bit shorter but the way it's been put in it's not the same uh, and also the bracelets aren't interchangeable in case you think they are uh, and that's because obviously the shape the curvature on the end links now the links on the c-stern a bit plain you know, fully brushed uh, you do have a slight tape from 20 mil down to 18 millimeters you've got polished sides and this watch does use uh, what are they are they screwing links yes you do get screwing links with this uh, kind of small screws uh, you also got a flip lock clasp uh, with pushers on either side and you've got six micro adjustments you've got c-stern branding across the clasp uh, and yeah, it is a good bracelet. It feels good. Uh, it does feel slightly toned down, um, but you know, it does definitely do the job. Fully brushed links, it's a three link design as well. Um, so yeah, nothing to complain about at all. And it's a bit more, you know, tool like in nature. And I think it does suit the watch in terms of aesthetics. Now, moving on to the Romalti, I think the Romalti uh, with the bracelet does steal the show. You've got a bit more, you've got more detailing on this bracelet. You've got brushing along the A-face and on the edges of those links, you can see you've got beveled edges and of course, highly polished as well. So just a bit more detailing on there. I think the links do look a bit nicer. They're a bit shorter than the links on the C-stern. Um, screwing links as well, slightly larger screws than that are present uh, on the C-stern, but they're both screwed in regardless. The clasp is a bit nicer. You've got the brushing across the top and a multi design, which does remind me of Pagani design. I know a few of the people have picked that up and they don't quite like that, but it does have twin pushes on the clasp. Uh, and you know, you've got milled internals. However, this piece, I was convinced this wasn't milled correctly, but Romalti, when I went back to them, told me this is how it's supposed to look. Um, if any of you guys do have a Romalti on a bracelet, uh, the 62 Mass Homage, let me know in the comment section if it is the same. But this is where this clasp lacks. Uh, you've only got two micro adjustments on there. And but this is the reason I went back to Romalti because I found it hard to believe they only put two in there 
uh, I believe this probably wasn't machined enough or this was like a bad clasp uh, which didn't make it to the final processing but the data show me it's supposed to only have two so with that being said um, I think in terms of overall on the bracelet Romalti does take this win uh, you know with the nicer finishing on the links slightly different design uh, so there's a point for Romalti on this one um, the only thing I'd say about the Seastern the clasp is better because you've got more micro adjusts on there more for, it's a more functional crown um and yeah you've got you know equally nice finishing um but just this clasp does look a bit nicer so seaston does not score on the bracelet or the clasp uh remolti takes the points on that one so when we get to unwrist with the remolti you can see straight away uh, even though the bracelet isn't fully enclosed it actually doesn't need to be um those end links and that straight case shape make it where very straight on wrist uh, it's actually not wrapping around the wrist and just sitting on the wrist i can't imagine this will be very comfortable for a long time uh, because you do have a gap between the the wrist and the actual watch now for six and a half inch wrist which is what i have it's probably not ideal uh, i think it would fit better on a seven and a half inch uh, i think this can encompass larger wrist sizes better uh, but keeping a sort of smaller case dimension Bracelet is nice, very soft, uh, and it does look really good on wrist. Um, I do like those chamfered or beveled polished edges on the links, uh, and the clasp is okay for the most part. Now, the Seastern wears that much better on wrist due to the curvature of those lugs. It does seem to hug the wrist a bit better. Um, the second link uh, does touch the sides of the wrist, so those main end links uh, make minimal impact wearing the watch. Um, and yeah, it's just a touch slimmer in terms of profile. Of course, the tapering of those lugs uh, as they get a bit smaller towards the end, that does definitely help how the watch rests on wrist. The bracelet, like I said, it, it does a good job for matching the watch. Uh, it's nothing special. It is finished well. Um, but that end link, which is quite long and large, uh, does stick out um, and it's not very nice to look at. And I've always said it with uh, the 6-2 Mass Homages and the Captain Willards. I prefer them much more on waffle or tropical straps or any other fabric or a different type of strap i think it looks a bit more classical to me now uh, let's summarize between both watches and what was the total score so the seaston was one two three four five five points ahead uh, of the remolti uh, in fact the, the only category that the remolti scored over the seaston was the actual bracelet um they were evenly matched for the most part so on the dial evenly matched uh, i believe i gave one point to the seastern uh, just for the finishing on the handset and the loomed date wheel um, the bezel definitely the seastern is way better both in terms of feel of the bezel the construction of that bezel um, and yeah the rotation is much better sounds a lot better than the one on the remolti and case wise you know exactly the same in terms of quality of course slightly different in shape and aesthetics and also the crystal got a point on the seaston because it is a more expensive crystal this top hat style that you see versus just a you know normal flat sapphire crystal on the remolti but my overall opinion of both watches it's going to be a subjective one because what remolti does modernizes um, that traditional 62 mass case design a lot more than the seaston you know with all the various style options with all the bezel insert options and it's a little closer to i think the new spb 143 as well um just a touch smaller because they're coming at around 40 millimeters and the bracelet is really well made uh, so this is going to be quite subjective to choose between the two uh, this bezel rotation i don't think it's on all models i think it's just on this one um because i've not heard anything from you know all the other people that have bought them uh, and whereas the seaston i prefer the seaston a bit more because of the traditional looks the extras like the loomed bezel insert the loomed date wheel uh you know at night time with all the loom on there it will look fantastic um and i feel i think the build is by a touch better uh than on this remolti um but when it comes to the prices the seaston coming 146 versus the uh, remolti 168 it's a no brainer the seaston is the winner here the best value for money six to mass homage versus the remolti um but i'm definitely sure the prices were the other way around uh, correct me if i'm wrong guys so that's it for me today hope you guys enjoyed that and i will definitely see you on the next review